Hello and welcome to the initialization tutorial. In this tutorial, you're going to be learning some initialization techniques. You'll be learning how to tell your systems in which order to run so that they function together and properly. So the scene I have here, we have this start cube and this finish cube. And what I want to do is create a bunch of random spawn points around this finish cube. And I also want to create a bunch of NPCs around this start cube. And then I want those NPCs to walk over to one of the randomly generated checkpoints over here at the finish line. So most of that is set up here in this game manager game object. Underneath it, we have our NPCs game object and checkpoints game object. Now, these are just empties because that's where our NPCs will be stored. And this is where all checkpoints will be stored. In our game manager, we have three FSMs. We have the NPC spawner, the race manager, and the checkpoint spawner. So first, our NPC spawner, you'll see that it just has this create object and it loops and then it goes here to complete, so nothing else after that. That just creates 25 NPCs. Okay, now our NPC, if I open up the prefab, you'll see it has a nav mesh agent component on it, an animator, and this single FSM start the race. So in this FSM, nothing is happening on this first state. I can call this one idle, but it has this transition here, begin race. So it's gonna be waiting for something to send this event, which will take it to state two, where it'll start playing its walk animation. So play walk animation. And then once that's done, it'll go to state three, where it'll go to random checkpoint. Okay. And this is where I have a get random object that will take one of the random destinations and then set that as its destination. So in the game manager, once it creates all those NPCs, I have this other FSM, the race manager, which gets the next child from this NPC game object, right? So all the NPCs stored in here, it'll just loop through, get every single NPC. And once it gets one, it tells it to start racing and it just sends an event, that begin race event. Okay, so that's what tells our NPC to grab a checkpoint and start walking over. And then over here in the checkpoint spawner, it's a very similar setup to the one that creates NPCs, except this time we're going to be getting the position of this finish cube and then we're going to be adding a five unit offset to its X and Z axis. So it kind of gives us a random point within five units of this object. And then we use that random point to create that checkpoint and put it there at some random point. And I'm also using this set tag action to make sure that the sphere gets tagged as a checkpoint since our NPC will be selecting a random checkpoint by looking for that tag. Okay, so we do that 25 times and then we go off to complete. Now, all of these FSMs are on. All of the systems are pretty much in place, but you'll see that when I hit play, nothing happens. We see all the checkpoints, right? It randomly placed those around, that, that worked out. And it looks like there's one NPC here, but actually if I drop this down, you'll see that it did create all these clones. So there's actually multiple NPCs here, but they're not doing anything. If I select any one of these, you'll see that it's just still on idle. We'll see that in our race manager, it said complete. It's at complete as if it ran through the system and it told all the NPCs to begin the race. You see that this state did run, but it never made it to here. You could tell because these numbers up here, right? This one says that we were at this state. This one says that we were at this state. And this zero says that we were never at this state. That tells us how many times we looped through this state. And the thing is, this zero tells us that this never happened. This tell NPC to start racing state never ran. So it just went from here to here. If you look at this first state, it stored the next child and it says none. There's nothing, it didn't grab anything from that. So you can kind of come to the conclusion that, well, when it was trying to get a child from the NPC's game object, that there wasn't anything in it to grab. And so it just went to complete because it thought that that was it. So this is where initialization techniques come in. A big part of having all of your systems interact with each other is making sure that they run in the proper order. Like this race manager, it should have waited to run until after all the NPCs were successfully created in here. So let me show you some of the different ways that you can set that up. The first way is by using a send event. If we have, let's say, this race manager starting here at the get next child, it's just gonna run automatically. Right when the game starts, this FSM is gonna run and it's gonna do its thing. But we could give it a new state and we'll call this its initialization state. You can even call it the wait state or like wait for NPCs to build. And we'll set this as the start state. And we'll come into events and we'll add a new event called ready to run. And I'll check this to make it a global event. And now I'll add that transition ready to run to send off here. 
Okay, so once this gets that transition fired off, then it will do its thing. So it just stays in here and does nothing until then, which means we can come over to our NPC spawner and in the complete state, once it's created all of these NPCs, once it hits this complete state, then we can have a send event, which will send to our race manager and it'll send this ready to run event. Okay, so it'll make all the NPCs come here to complete and it'll send this event ready to run over to our race manager, which is sitting here waiting for that. And it gets the ready to run and then it gets all the NPCs. So now I should be able to hit play. And sure enough, the system runs this time. Okay, because it actually had NPCs to grab to tell to do the thing. Okay. Now, another way we could do this, I'm just gonna get rid of this send event here in the NPC spawner. And in this wait for NPCs to build state, I'm gonna put in a next frame event. Now, the way this works is I'll have it send, let's say a new event called next. Okay, we'll add that. Let's get rid of this old ready to run transition. And let's just say next goes there instead. So this next frame event says, sends an event in the next frame. It's going to wait a frame before it goes off to the next state. So believe it or not, in this NPC spawner, all these NPCs, 25 NPCs, are gonna get created in less than a frame. And that way, our race manager only has to wait a single frame before it fires off over here. Okay, so now I should be able to hit play. And sure enough, the system works. Okay, because these guys had time to get produced before this decided to do its thing. Now, similarly, let's say the NPC spawner took a really long time, say it had a lot more stuff to do. Sometimes that next frame in our race manager wouldn't be enough time, which you could do. And this isn't always advised. It's not the best solution. You can end up using a wait action. And you could say, just wait a second before firing off to next. And sometimes if you really need to wait a while, you can wait like two seconds or three seconds. We'll see that just changing this to a wait says don't don't do any of this yet. Wait a couple seconds because we're gonna wait for these NPCs to build. So if I hit play. Sure enough, there we go. All the NPCs got created and then this did its thing after a couple seconds. Again, this isn't the best practice, but sometimes you really do just need to wait a second before the system runs. I'm gonna get rid of that. And instead, I'm gonna put a bool test in here. And the bool test, I'll set a new variable called is ready. And it'll be checking every frame and it'll only do something if it's true. We'll have it send off this next event. And then over here in our NPC spawner, in the complete state, we'll have a set FSM bool and it'll be targeting the race manager. The bool is ready and we're gonna set that value to true. All right, so that's setting the bool value is ready to true on our race manager. So once it is set to true, it'll go next and do its thing, right? But only after first creating those NBCs. I'm gonna hit play and sure enough, it runs, okay? Because it made all these first in our NPC spawner before coming over here and setting that value to true. You can also do the reverse of this, which is to say you have a set bool value and we'll have the variable is ready, right? By default, it's false. But when we get here, we'll set it to true. Now this is only setting this FSM, this NPC spawner, it's local bool variable is ready. So it's only setting it locally with this set bool value. And now what we could do is over here in the race manager, instead of doing a bool test here only, what you can have is get FSM bool. And we'll be getting it from our NPC spawner, the is ready. And we're gonna be copying that value and putting it in our own local is ready. This will also be running every frame. So this is doing the same thing we did a moment ago with the set FSM bool, except now we're kind of doing it from the opposite end of the system. And instead we're getting that local bool variable from the other FSM. This way, it does involve that one extra step, right? Because now we have our set bool value. So that's like one extra action that's needed. But the value of doing just this one extra step is that now you actually have something to trace back to. So when you're debugging the system or if you're just coming back to it to see how things work, 
a long time later, you know, it's been months since you've designed the thing, you won't be sitting here with just a bool test going, wait a minute, wh what is even setting this bool? How does it know when to run? It's kind of magically coming from some other FSM and then you're like, okay, well, I guess I have to go and dig through all my states and go, okay, where is it, where's it coming from? Until eventually you find out like, oh, that's right. It was actually being set from another FSM. So using this getfsm bool is a way of being able to sort of follow your little breadcrumb trail of being able to trace back to where things are happening. I'll have this NPC spawner selected and the is ready and it changes the is ready. It's running every frame, right? That's the setup. Now you know that, okay, well, it's dependent on our NPC spawner. It's a little bit more of a responsible way to sort of keep the checks and balances of your systems. Now, the last way I'll show you how to do things here is by getting rid of both of these. And in fact, I'll just set the start state back to this one and I'll get rid of this state. So it just starts, right? It just does, this is the system that we started with. And we know that if we run this, it's not gonna work because it needs to wait for the thing. But that's only because this FSM exists on the same game object and it's just automatically running. What if we disable this race manager and then we come over to our NPC spawner and instead of setting that bool value, now we're gonna have an enable FSM and we'll enable our race manager. I'll deselect this reset on exit. Okay, so with this enable FSM, once it creates all the NPCs, we come here to the complete state where it enables our race manager, which by default is off. So this whole thing needs to run first before it gets re-enabled. So you'll see if I hit play, it runs as expected. And actually, one last thing, one last thing here. Uh, besides enable FSM, you could even create a new empty and I'll call this one the begin race FSM. And what I'll do is I'll take this race manager and I'll copy the component, remove it from here, and then come over here to this other game object and I'll, and I'll paste that component in. So now it exists on its own separate game object. But what you could do is deactivate the game object. So this FSM won't be running. And now you can come over to the game manager and instead of enabling FSM, you could do an activate game object. Okay, and we'll say that we're gonna be activating the begin race FSM. So it's not doing anything since the whole game object itself is turned off. It's not doing anything until all these NPCs spawn and we come here to the complete state. Okay, so I'll hit play and there we go. So you can also imagine that using this activate game object method that whatever object you're activating, for example, here our begin race FSM, this game object here, Right now it only has this race manager FSM, but you could have a bunch of other FSMs on here that get enabled when this game object is activated, but get disabled when the game object is deactivated. And that's a really convenient way of disabling and enabling multiple FSMs at once without having to individually hook each of them up to something like an enable FSM action, because otherwise you would be using something like enable FSM, and then you would have to specify the FSM every single time. And then you'd have to copy this and paste it and paste it, paste it. And then you'd be doing one for each time. Whereas if you were just using the activate game object, this one action alone will now disable and enable all the FSMs that are on this game object. Now you have some of these tools at your disposal, which can help you order and prioritize which systems run at which points so they can all interact harmoniously. Be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of Playmaker. Links to more learning resources are in the description.